Hi everyone, it's Mike with Crane Realty. Uh, today's video, I just wanted to talk with you regarding uh, showings, and specifically when we're doing a showing, uh, addressing the condition of the property. Uh, obviously for myself, a licensed realtor, I'm not a licensed home inspector or anything like that, but I have walked alongside a number of different home inspectors and have kind of clued in and seen the different things and triggers that they're looking out for and have applied that into a lot of my showings as well. And I know, especially in this type of climate, uh, buyers are doing all sorts of things in order to be competitive uh, by their choice. If they want to waive an inspection for our brokerage, our position is that we always encourage it, but we do understand if that's the position of a number of different buyers, if they so choose. Uh, if that's the case, it's so important to actually know ahead of time before writing, what is the condition of the property? So I jotted down a few different things here that when we go and do a showing, there's some things to keep in the back of your mind that we can actually be looking out for and paying attention. So with no further delay, I'll just start reading off of the list here. Uh, starting in the basement, the basement's really gonna be a tell all location. Uh, it's really a place that has a vast majority of things that are going on with it, right? It's the foundation, there's a lot of utility down there, and obviously being a hole in the ground, it could be prone to having a lot of different types of water aspects to it and how they're addressing it. So right when you're coming down the stairs, first thing, what does it smell like? Does it smell dry? Uh, do you notice any visual sense of like mildew growth or anything that are on the foundation walls or corners when you're walking into a property? So those are some, th uh, those are some really good things to be looking out for. Uh, when you're looking at the foundation walls, do you see any type of step cracks or horizontal cracks? Uh, different behaviors depending on the age of the property, what type of foundation they used, if it's a much older home and they, uh, definitely the 1800s, uh, early 1900s, were they using stone foundation? Usually uh, pop, uh, very common characteristics are they're, they're gonna be prone to having some seepage uh, take place. Do you see any water staining or any type of behavior there or on the floor? Uh, if it's cinder block, uh, do you see any type of, usually they run horizontal cracks or step cracks that actually occur uh, sometimes in the corners. Those are certain things to look out for. Obviously, if they're hairline fractures, uh, that's prone to happen, but making sure that they're not uh, gapping or if the block is going in and out. And when you look at the stone, uh, is there any repointing needed? A uh, very common characteristic for uh, stone foundation, for the mortar that's between the stones, sometimes it corrodes and you can kind of see that falling away. And did the current homeowner have somebody like a mason come back out and repoint the foundation so it's all nice and flush? That's something to look out for as well. Uh, when you're downstairs in the basement, like I mentioned, there's a lot of utility down there usually. So there could be a heating service, either a furnace or a boiler or something else, an on-demand boiler perhaps, a uh, hot water heater. Uh, those are different utilities that you can check and see if there's usually uh, sticker service dates that are written down and you can see uh, who was that company that came out to service it. And every now and again, you'll actually see dates of when the uh, product was actually installed into that home as well. Uh, the PCD or the property condition disclosure will sometimes clue in on those different dates and when they're serviced, in which case if they can provide a receipt of something that was recently done within the last 12 to possibly 18 months, that's always a good thing to see. And when you're down in the basement, for a majority of different uh, properties, usually the electric panel will be down in the basement. That's something to visually observe, not something necessarily that uh, we can be touching or uh, looking around, obviously. Uh, but you can observe, uh, like I mentioned before, a lot of basements, some of the characteristics are that moisture and water actually penetrates and comes into the basement. Is that something that being metal is being uh, corroded upon or have any sort of uh, signs of rust that we can see or uh, take note of. Uh, and also you can kind of tell when a real professional, somebody who takes pride in their work, who has all of the electric lines run to the box that visually it's very pleasing versus looking like something like a bowl of spaghetti uh, that, you know, somebody who knew just enough to be dangerous and get the lights on, uh, is not taking too much pride in their work or didn't come up in the trade to the point where they actually know how to run electricity. So when you're on the outside of the property, obviously take a look at what we've been talking about for a while, which is water. 
Does it have proper gutters installed? Uh, are gutters located on a number of different parts of the eaves as the water comes down off of the roof? Is there a number of different locations addressed or is the water coming straight down and is only a foot or two away actually from the foundation itself? Because obviously, depending on the grade of the property, uh, it might actually be going and being redirected back into the basement. And for the gutters, does it have a long enough shoot that actually gets it far enough away from the house. Uh, staying on the theme of water too, uh, what is the grade of the property? Does it have a negative grade where everything is kind of pitched towards the house itself? Or does it have a positive grade whereas any water coming off of the roof hits the ground and then will continue away from your house, which would be ideal. And then as you're walking around the property, uh, just be very mindful of the condition of the siding as well. Uh, take note as far as what type of siding it is, if it's aluminum, if it's uh, vinyl, uh, there's a number of different materials that it could be. It could even be like a cedar shake, uh, could be painted and so on. What is the condition of the siding itself? Do you see any areas of penetration that uh, perhaps critters or some other type of bugs or anything can actually get into, uh, which would be worth taking note of. Um, and then as you're looking around on the siding, Obviously take note of any windows, any broken windows, are they sealed, and trying to determine the age of the windows as well. Are they wood? Do they have storm windows? Uh, are they a bit newer, maybe an older vinyl, or much newer vinyls, are they replacement? So those are all different things to be on the look for as well. So age of the roof, that should be part of the PCD, the property condition disclosure. Uh, again, if you were to ask me, uh, that'll be something that I can bring up. And if it's not on the PCD, then we can talk with the, uh, the listing agent to get that from the seller for you. But even while we're at the property, despite the age of the roof, obviously some important characteristics to look out for, uh, especially in the shaded locations. Do you see any moss growth or any type of buildup like that that's occurring? That'll ob obviously uh, uh, deteriorate the shingles and cause a shorter lifespan for the roof itself. Or do you see any that are beginning to curl or any uh, shingle pieces that are missing? Uh, if you can observe any of those things, that'll obviously provide an indication that it's definitely past the midpoint of its life and closer to the end of its useful life. So continuing to circle around the property, uh, just be mindful of any type of encroachments when it comes to vegetation or trees. Uh, does anything seem like, especially for like a very big tree, is it planted close to the property? Is it something that you need to be mindful of? Uh, taking a look at the tree itself to see if it has any splits or anything that could be occurring down the road, things that you might have to have an arborist come out and address, which can get very expensive. So it's very important to be mindful of the different types of challenges that could be occurring regarding the different types of vegetation that you have around your property. Do you have any uh, growing or creeping ivy that's on the property as well? Uh, it's very beautiful, but uh, especially when it takes hold of certain types of like brick, for example, it can get right between that mortar of the brick and uh, the mortar itself and actually begin to pull that apart uh, over time. So it's something that you'd like to have removed uh, for sure if you were to move into that property. And then when it went around the inside of the home, uh, just trying to take advantage of any opportunity we can to observe and see uh, what type of insulation efforts that have gone into the home itself. So if we're in the basement, uh, did they spray foam around any of the band joists? That would be nice to see. That's where a lot of heat gets lost for a number of different properties. Uh, if there is a pull down or a staircase that actually goes to the attic, can we observe how much insulation that they've installed there? Uh, so just trying to get a couple of indications of that would be really helpful. Obviously, if we had an opportunity to poke up into the attic, we want to make sure that it's venting correctly, that it's that it feels dry, that the sheathing underneath those shingles that are holding it, is there any darkness or mildew growth that we can see, we will kind of provide an indication on whether that attic space is dry or not. So hopefully that this was really helpful. Again, it's gonna be on a case by case basis depending on the property that you're interested in. And then when we're in that property, Again, very important to make sure that it satisfies a number of those needs and that we thoroughly examine that property in its entirety to make sure that, that we hit that checkbox. But in addition to that, uh, what's the condition of the property? If that really is something that you're contemplating, you know, do I waive the inspection or not? 
regardless of it, it, it should just be something that for your own due diligence, that we're making sure that you're very aware of the condition of this property uh, as best we can when we're doing our very first showing. So hopefully this was helpful to you. Uh, if you'd like to do a showing with me or anything like that, feel free, give me a call. You can reach me at 585-412-8062. Again, I'm Mike with Crane Realty and I hope to hear from you soon.